Again, I'm very thankful for having you on the show, and I'm looking forward to building a friendship with you as well. Me too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Uncensored. This is episode 204. I'm here is the talented and beautiful Stephanie Elizabeth, and I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. You're so more than welcome. Now for Thanks for asking me. No, oh, Absolutely. Now, for people who want to know what Uncensored is, Uncensored is basically my way of showing people that even if we're born in disability, I can still overcome controversy and reach my goals in life. At the same time, I'm able to turn myself into a perfect example for people out there dealing with any types of disabilities or born in disabilities. But you should never have people label you and if you're very passionate about doing something with your life, you should go out and prove to them you can still amount to something. And for me, I <laughs> I fuck up everything I touch. You know, it's uncensored. I I fuck up everything I touch, but um, hey, uh, the talk show. You know, I hit some roadblocks here and there. I meet the right people. I meet the wrong people. But it's all about networking, and I'm showing people, like, oh, he's been doing this for almost three years. Good for him. At least he hasn't screwed it up. <laughs> but it's just, you know, I'm saying, I'm handicapped, I'm, I'm retarded, I have a disability. But look at what I'm capable of doing. And this is what I want to do for the rest of my life until I die. You know, um, there's a long thing that I will get into a little bit. Um, I had a shitty day at a job I may have, may stay with or may just cut it off. But um, this is not about me ranting because everyone heard me rant for the first two seasons. This is about you. And starting off, what can you tell us about yourself? And for the record, it's uncensored as in freedom of speech. Freedom of self-expression. You can get up, walk around. Some people drink. Some people smoke. I have no control over what you do or say. So you can express yourself any way in you uh, as necessary. That's why I say that. And starting off, I'm going to pass the show over to you. You can ask me anything you want. Talk about anything you want. But what can you tell us about yourself? Well, um... I have a lot of handicaps that I have to overcome daily too. And I, I run into the stigmas, the same exact sort of, I think it's not even a matter of being handicapped, but having what people consider disabilities and everyone else considers it a handicap. It's not a handicap to me because I'm the same as I've always been. And I just do what I normally do. I have um, broad spectrum autism and uh, version, you know, type of Asperger's and all kinds of other health issues and um, personal issues and mental issues and emotional issues that most people don't see on social media because what you put up on social media most of the time in order to keep people from being judgmental, you have to put up the happy, shiny shit to some degree. And I do that all the time, but I'm also trying to run basically six different business businesses because I'm self-employed and I'm running them all off the platforms of uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that without actual websites. I'm running it off of all the social media sites. It works well except the people don't want to see a business person with what they call disabilities and they don't really want to combine the two things. So. I started a second site uh, about a year ago. I started an advocacy platform for online bullying because everybody who's different ultimately gets bullied and a lot of people don't seem to consider cyber bullying a big deal. Um, it causes a lot of distress for me personally and I've known people that have actually had family members pass away over the upset and from it. Um, if, you, if you're cyber bullied at the wrong moment and you are at an emotionally weak moment, 
this stuff can happen. And people online feel like they don't have to be held accountable for the damage that they cause, and I don't believe that's true. So I keep trying to create a following on the, the platform of the, the cyberbullying and acceptance and realization that people that are different are just as capable, sometimes more capable, because we have to overcome so much. So, uh, also, I'm, in, I'm married, I'm in my second marriage. Um, I have a great husband this time around. <laughs> first, the first one was really horrible. And I've uh, always been self-employed, so self-employed. My mom is passing away slowly of terminal cancer, and I'm her caregiver. Um, we live in a 200-year-old farmhouse, basically in the middle of nowhere, and do everything online, therefore. Um, my husband is a musician and full-time college student, and my emotional support system <laughs> for when everybody online gets to me and I can't deal with it anymore. I'm really glad when I'm contacted by people like you, because sincere people are not common, and I have 5,000 friends and 3,000 followers on Facebook, and I can literally count on two hands the number of sincere people that I deal with. There's probably seven of them, and that's it. And so it's a battle. It's an uphill battle. So any kind of platform to speak out about people that are considered handicapped or disabled in any way, when I don't really think that there is such a thing. I just think everybody's different and everybody deserves the same amount of chance and respect. And unfortunately, social media doesn't really seem... It gives us all the opportunity to be out there with everybody else, but it doesn't give us the credit and the recognition for it that it should. And I find I'm attacked and bullied for how far I've come personally more than I'm praised for it. And I'm sure that's true for other people. So. Yeah. No, absolutely. I just noticed. What about me? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have as much time as you like. And you look beautiful, by the way. I just want to throw it out there. Thank you so much. You look great. I just bought my husband a shirt just like that. <laughs> yeah, two days, yesterday. Actually, yesterday. Well, I was uh, at work, and I was kind of like, well, I have this gift card. Might as well buy something useful. I have two black, uh, I had a black shirt, and I have it in one of these um, jacket things that I kept opening and taking it out and putting it back. I said, yeah, I need a full, like, black shirt. So I said, ah, screw it. I have a gift card. Might as well get it. That's but, exactly what we did yesterday. I was like, we have to get you a black dress shirt. That's it. So we went to Salvation Army and thrifted and found a brand new black dress shirt. I think it was like $2. So that was good. I think mine was only about like uh, thirty three dollars. That's not bad. I know they run like fifty a lot of times, so that's good too. Well it depends on the quality. This one's kinda shitty. But you know, it's kinda like uh, it's a it's a throwaway shirt. But I wanted something like a nice silk shirt. I know that it, it's gotta be a lot of money. It comes off nice though. Looks nice. Yeah, I appreciate it. And <laughs> I do I do have a fat neck, so I'm trying to hide it. Yeah, you know what? Smart and sensitive people, we're all too way critical of ourselves. <laughs> way critical. My brother makes fun of me because he says I have no neck. So it's kind of oh. like, it really gets me. So I started to do neck exercises, and it's kind of like... You have a neck. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I see a neck. I appreciate it. <laughs> Now, here's the next question I was going to ask you. Now, people who want to know how come I'm starting to do Gotha Girls. And the first one is I interviewed actors, actresses, right. models, CEOs, professional wrestlers, everyone you can think of in my first two seasons. Wow. And when I was going back in high school, I wore all black and I really liked the whole gothic thing. I, I thought it was very interesting. You may think I'm an idiot or an ass kisser, <laughs> but I find it very interesting and 
Yeah, I always did too when I was a kid. My mom gave me a lot of hard time about it, however, when I was a teenager. So she called it my black phase. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, I just, um, first off, women are women. You know, it doesn't matter, black, white, Asian, gothic, not gothic, women are women. And I just like the whole gothic thing. I, I let's see, what's 2000, 2005? All the way through until 2008, 2009, where I was obsessed with talking to gothic girls. And I was on MySpace, I was I on IMVU. Yeah. IMVU, it's, you know, the instant messenger virtual reality. Where yeah, it's fun too. And unfortunately, and it didn't bother me, I tried using it recently. You don't know who you're talking to unless you have a real picture. So I found out the hard way you can't really network with that. So I don't use it anymore. Right. But MySpace, I had over a thousand people. 2008. Perfect opportunity to do my talk show, but I had my head up my ass. And long story short, I was I worked at a store. Um, they, how we're talking now. You yeah. were this girl who would go in the back and say, you know, Keith is stalking me. Keith is doing this. Keith is doing that. Then I would get yelled at. It's like, oh, Keith, we're just screwing with you. We're fucking with you. We're just having fun with you. We know you have a learning disability. Don't take it so personally. So I got sick out of it. You know, I had anxiety growing up. Yeah. And this really brought it out. So it took me a whole year to recover. And during that time, I was using IMVU and recovering. And recently, I was like, well, I interviewed a whole bunch of people. Well, originally, I got up to 300. And unfortunately, people were started to come out of the woodwork. Yeah, you know, my agent said and my publicist said, you are degrading. Some of the questions you were asking were kind of redundant. Can he take down the interview? Can he put it on private? And I'm like, Ben, why did we waste the time to do it in the first place? Yeah, I, I thought you were just pulling people along. I thought it would benefit me in some way or because I'm dealing with people like you. And that's like, well, you sound like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I had, I said, you know what, tuck everything down, all 300 down. Now I pay more money for the internet because I um, up re, up re uploaded all my interviews. So I was tying up the internet so my brother and my dad were getting crazy. So I go, well, why is the internet so strong? Keep doing one of his stupid interviews again. So I had to pay more to Optimum. That's fine by me. Right. So I was re-uploading all the interviews, but this time, and for our listeners, I have my binder, and now it says season three. Yes, I like Ninja Turtles. I wanted to be different. <laughs> so I open it, and now I have like papers to say, um, blah, 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 John, sign off on it, and he gives me permission to use the interview. Like you did, I asked you. Can I, I have your permission to use the interview? Right. I should have done that from the start, but I wasn't thinking. I was taking people by their word. Exactly, yep. So now I'm doing it once I have written permission. It's like, hey, well, you said I can do whatever I want with the interview. You can't go back on it. Right. However, I'm not making money off it. I'm just saying you were nice enough to be on the show. Right. Uh, make a long story short instead of rambling it. <laughs> It's one of those days. Um, I know. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just, you know, going back to the whole gothic thing, I wanted to get closure because it whole started in high school, and it was this big gap. And I was like, well, I'm interviewing everyone. What the hell? <laughs> Why not interview gothic girls? And some of them said yes. Some of them said no. You were nice enough to say yes. And there's... Number one best said yes. And the question that I'm trying to um, dictate to you without dancing around is, is it 
all gothic people are mentally disturbed, or do you think it's just a stereotype? Um, I don't think mentally disturbed. I think, well, this is an uncensored show, so I really actually think they're all kind of uh, more aware and, and kind of superior, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems like just more sensitive and more in tune with their artistic side and their, right. their need for self-expression, but also they have a need for acceptance, but it's ironic because we all know we're not going to be accepted by the normal crowd. We're still going to be pointed at and left and we don't want that and we get hurt, but we have to express ourselves despite it. So we're actually, it's a really strong community. It's a small, it's a minority community really, but it's just a strong group of people. I was that way as a teenager, and I was always in black clothing and lots of smeared stuff around my eyes and everything, and I had actually bright red hair spiked straight up, and my mom hated it <laughs> and was tortured by it and thought that I was, I, she couldn't understand how she rated it to me. She just couldn't understand where it came from, and it was awful, and... I wound up getting a modeling contract when I was 17, and they didn't want the look that I had at all. They, in fact, they want whatever look they at that right. time want. So I, they wanted my hair straight and blonde, and they wanted my skin tan, not pale. And I spent many years modeling, looking like that. And you know, every once a week, I put up throwback pics of. Me all tan and blonde, and it blows people away because they're like, that's not the same person, you know, that's weird. I was accepted that way, though, generally by the public. People didn't stop, stare, point, laugh, and make fun all the time, and they actually still do that, especially where we live. We live in a really um, narrow-minded, small town, and I think my husband and I are the only people that even look different out of about the 2,000 people that live here. <laughs> But, no, I don't think that, that, that goths are mentally disturbed, no. I think that it's people that are more in touch with their sensitive side and just need to express it. And I think when you're in touch with your emotions more, darker stuff comes to the surface more, and you're drawn to darker things more because you're simply more aware. Of, that's the reality of life. Life isn't all happy, shiny, blonde hair and designer clothes. It is more dark things and, you know, things, you know, it's not all about death, but it does play a big part in it. So it's, I think that it's just a community of people that are, that choose to be more aware of what the general public sweeps under the rug. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the last, I'm going to ask you in our heart, <laughs> I can't even talk, I said, I'm so... <laughs> Okay, I was so afraid I was going to stutter with you because I tend to stutter when I'm nervous. So I'm glad I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, thanks. So now it's rubbing off on me. <laughs> I gave it to you, yeah. <laughs> I haven't done my interviews as of late, you know, so it's I'm kind of trying to get back into the rhythm. And I can explain, you know, the BS, to, you know, what happened today if you want to hear it later on. Sure. But um, the next hard-hitting question I was going to ask you is about... Um, What's in the paper released to me about transsexual rights? Right. Now, your mother gave you a hard time for being gothic. Would yeah. she, would she, uh, would have, and at first off, I, I'm really sorry for everything you're going through. My aunt passed away a year ago from cancer, oh. and I understand everything you're going through. You know, I, my parents went through it last year. My dad's brain cancer five years ago, and my mom remarried, and her husband died of bone cancer last month and now she's been battling cancer for five years and I, I'm not an optimistic person with anything ever but with her I'm in denial that this is happening so I'm trying to convert it into optimism and I just keep coming up with all kinds of holistic things for her to do and I'm just you know trying to keep her here but it's tough it really is she lives in the house next door to ours so we take care of her Sorry to sidetrack, but yeah, she was not happy with me being all um, outside the box. <laughs> no, absolutely. I just I want to send my condolences because I, I do understand. Yeah. Well, going to another note, <laughs> not to sound morbid, what do you, 
Would your uh, mother would have had a heart attack if, say, you were a lesbian or you wanted to turn yourself into a guy? Do you think that's more of an issue than just say, I'm going to wear all black today? Mm. And I'm I trying was, to make you laugh, too. That's why I did the voice. I, was, I think I, when I was about 10 or 11, my mother had a conversation with me about, like, general things that she considered to be adult conversation that it was time for me to have. She was like, you know, if you want to drink or you want to smoke, you know, if you want to try out cigarettes or you feel like having alcohol, her thing was do it at home. Do it in front of me. Don't go out and sneak around. And when she told me all that, that just made me have absolutely no interest in it at all. So I just never did it. That's what was funny with that. But she said to me, if you're a criminal and you go out and kill somebody, I'll support you anyway. I'll hide you from the police or whatever I have to do. But you're my daughter, you know, and if you do something horrible and, and, you know, you need help, I'll be there for you. And she was always great that way. And she did say to me, you know, if you turn out to be gay or something, it's okay. You're still my daughter. She, you know, transsexual wasn't covered in the conversation. She just said gay. But I would imagine... It might have been a little harder for her, but I think she would have gone there because she is, she, she, she comes around to pretty much anything. She just needs time. And in about two years ago, when I decided to go from blonde and tanned back to staying out of the sun and dyed my hair back, and I'm actually naturally blonde, that's what's really ironic, but going back to my teenage look sort of she was shocked and I think it's taken her about a year and a half to adapt to it now she likes it better but it took her a while My. so I don't think that any parents should have issues personally if I had children that had any any of those topics come up I don't see how it would really be relevant it wouldn't change anything it just doesn't change who they are as people to me I can't understand the big fuss everywhere about how, with anybody being unaccepting of anybody else unless you're out there molesting kids or hurting animals or murdering people. Otherwise, you know, I give you a chance. I give you a fair chance, and if you're a decent person, okay. I don't know why people. I'm not. I'm not judgmental. I'm not even capable of it. It gets me in a lot of trouble because I'm open. But I'll accept any friend request. I'll talk to anybody one time, I'll talk to them until they do something that usually shocks me and leaves me hurt. It leaves me open to a lot, but I I can't even comprehend how people are judgmental the way they are, especially based on somebody's preferences or somebody's anything, anything personal like that, the way they look or the way they feel, it, that's irrelevant. Unless you're hurting animals or something, then, you know. Yeah, I don't put up with that. Really, again, I am really an animal fan, and if somebody's hurting animals, I really have a problem. That's like the worst thing to me, but beyond no reason to be cruel to people for the stuff people are cruel over, personally. Yeah, absolutely. Now, before I pass this show over to you for the last 10 minutes, do you, uh, even though I had a shitty day, um, <laughs> I was walking around the store, and um, I saw this woman... She wasn't blind or anything, but she had a service dog with her. So I, I, I assume it was a, a companion dog or something. Right. But I said, uh, I'm sorry, but can I pet the dog? <laughs> so I go, oh, I pet the, I pet the door and go to retriever, and I stuck my face in the dog's face, and the dog gave me a big kiss. And all the BS I was going for all that day didn't matter because the dog made it better. There was a meme going around recently. Uh, I only saw it twice. And it said, if you're having a bad day, just remember, if you meet a stray dog in the street, it'll like you and it'll lick your face. And and so everything's okay. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I never heard that one before. Yeah, I saw it I saw it two times and I liked it so much I downloaded it and I'm going to post it in the future. I just thought that was cool. Because it's true, because no matter how miserable everything is, you can go up to a, you know somebody's little dog on the leash in the street and it'll kiss you and be like, I'm so glad to meet you, and you know you're worthwhile, because dogs are picky. Yeah. They decent and who isn't. 
<laughs> I have four cats and I have one dog. And all the stray cats that I met, all the stray dogs I met, well, except for my uncle's dog that bit me in the face. But uh, that was a uh, dog was nuts. But all the dogs that I met, they all like me. So yeah. that says a lot about me. Oh. Now, <laughs> now, like I said, this is not all about me, this is about you. So I'm going to pass the show over to you. You can say anything you want, talk about anything you want. This is your time, after all. Um, I don't even know. I don't even know where to go. You can guide me. Please. All right, well, I know I was dancing around the class <laughs> and all this time, you know. Basically, I worked in a store. I won't mention it by name, but they're a bunch of assholes. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they hired me knowing the fact I had a warning disability. Okay. And... They said, oh, well, we're going to hire you for 90 days, and then we will see if we like you, we're going to keep you. Okay, I passed in the 90 days, and now it's been officially 10 months. Wow. Now, okay, what's, I'm going to use you for an example. You uh -huh. hire me. You know the fact that I have a learning disability. And you don't, you know, you say to me, the only thing you did say was do your job, Make sure you're giving the best service to people, and don't do anything stupid. Okay. And it's just to give best service. So for 10 months, you know, even though I did to do stupid things, like I gave, uh, <laughs> they have a thing called red cards. Yeah. And I, so I was like, well, if you sign up for a red card, uh, I can give me an extra 5%. So it's like, okay, you know, well, People were doing that. My brother did that in uh, his store. That's how you you have to negotiate with people. You have to make deals. You have to give to get. And I was like, right. well, that's not really supposed to. And some stores do and some stores don't. So I got ripped into it saying you can't give people 5%. But you want people to get the red cards. Yes, we need the red cards. But you don't want people to get, oh, don't, don't, don't go try twisting the words around me. That was the first one. And the uh, second one was, most recently, they like to time people on their cashier speed. Now, going back 10 months ago, if that was so important, why didn't you fire me 10 months ago? Why did you purposely... Yeah. Why is it an issue now? Yeah, well, why is it all of a sudden, 10 months later, it's like, surprise. And it's like, well, you, you know, you did take those tests. Yeah, but the person who was helping me basically gave me the answer. I was, going, I was going to quit because if you couldn't pass the test, they wouldn't hire you. Right. But I said, I really want to work here. So she just gave me the answers. But on my like, all of a sudden, you know, my whole disability became an issue. You know, this and that. And it's like, okay, you know, I see you're building a case against me. And it's, don't, right. don't, yeah. hurt, uh, go ahead. Why would they be doing that at this point in time? And yeah, it seems like they're just trying to build something up so that they can take some step. But why? Are they cutting back on people or something? Um, I. The excuses were that I was doing the five percent, and that was one thing, and it. Done. I did this sort of. It's ridiculous. This is a whole ongoing thing, but it's like don't hire people with special needs, and when something happens, you say. We don't know what to do. Maybe this is not the best bet. It's, it's just ridiculous. Like, you know, you know, fucking fire me, fire me. It's not the end of the world. You know, I'm sorry to say the F word, but it's uncensored. No, 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 it's fine. I, can you see my shirt? I have a swear word. See? Epic and shit. <laughs> Epic and shit. <laughs> you see people's faces when I wear that in front of children. <laughs> well, I tell you a funny story about that. I actually have two funny stories, and... If you have funny stories, I would love to hear it. Um, are you a wrestling girl? 
Not particularly, but I don't know anything about it. I've actually never been exposed to it. All right, so there's this uh, WWF uh, slash WWE group called D Generation X, and their whole thing is going around telling people to suck it. <laughs> so it says D Generation X on the front, and on the back it says suck it. Okay. It, so I went to ShopRite one time, and I was completely oblivious to uh, people behind me. I really don't give a shit what people think of me. You yeah, know, I know it's that way. I'm uber sensitive, and I care what everybody thinks in my office. Like, fuck them. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Fuck them. <laughs> so on the back of my shirt, I said, "Degenerate." I just said, "Suck it." And my mom said, "As soon as you began in car, you will never ever go out in public with me wearing that shirt again." And I'm like, "Why? Well, what's the problem?" My dad said, "What's what's the problem?" The woman behind us was giving Keith the evil eye. Oh God. And the other one, I went to the crappy store that I was working in. I was wearing Iron Maiden. And the woman who looked at the shirt, all she saw was a skull and, you know, the guy holding the thing like this. And she, she started to pull her kid away. I'm like, it's a t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, people will do that. <laughs> I had, I used to be in the antique restoration business years ago. And we had a full-size van to put all the furniture and stuff in. Right. And I'm a witch, in case you didn't know that. And I don't care if it blows people's minds or not. It's actually, it does blow people's minds. But I always had bumper stickers and pentacles and stuff all over the back of the van. And I used to put all the bumper stickers on magnetic strips so I could switch them up whenever I really wanted to insult people. <laughs> <laughs> different ones on. So we're sitting in front of a grocery store like ShopRite, but a more local one here. And I'm not thinking anything of what's on the outside of my car. I'm sitting in the car waiting for the person with me to get groceries and come back out. And I'm sitting there with the window open, and I sense two people walking up next to my open window. And I'm very, I'm kind of antisocial in public. I have, like, social anxiety, and I right. try to keep to myself as much as possible, and I'm always kind of like this when I'm in the <laughs> car. So I'm sort of sitting there and I see they're right up to, to the window and on the back of the car there was a pentacle and a witchcraft bumper sticker that was it that day it was actually tame and this guy probably in his 60s is standing there when I look over and he's looking at me and he yells you're going to hell you're going to hell <laughs> turns around and walks away <laughs> And not two weeks later, I'm at home raking my yard, and I had a t-shirt on with a pentacle on the front, but it, was, um, it wasn't even anything to do with, with witchcraft. It had to do with a, a, a festival that I'd been to, and it just had a pentacle on the front, and this car stops on the road, and the guy yells something indiscernible, and I looked up thinking it must be somebody I know, and it wasn't. And he backs the car back down, and he yells the same thing. It was a different person. He yells, you're going to hell. You people are going to hell. And he drove away. And it, that's amazing to me. It's funny now. Now I think it's, you know, hilarious. And I, I went into a craft store a couple weeks after all that happened, and they had these little plastic finger puppets that you stick your finger up, and they're just little plastic figures, little people. And they had nuns in little nun outfits. So I bought a little nun and I put it on the dashboard in my car and every time somebody came over to harass me, I used to put my finger in the little nun finger puppet and I'd be like, you're going to hell! <laughs> That's about the funniest story I have. <laughs> I don't know what else. <laughs> but you're right, you know, I don't know what the deal with people are recently, but they're just stupid, selfish, and ignorant. And people have to go out of their way to say some, something that's not nice. Go out of your way to say something nice. Why go out of your way to say something mean? I give you a perfect example. My sister, I get to sh um, scared the shit was because he, there's this, um, she was coming to the intersection and some guy tried to cut her off and she cut the guy off. So they're at the white and he can know what happened or what happened next. The guy basically got out of the car, 
went out to her window and was staring at her. So the light turned green and my sister just took off. And I'm like, really? I'm like, I, this is exactly why I hate people. Stupid, selfish, ignorant, and it's kind of like... You got it. You got it's. It's sad that you have to even be careful in public because you don't know. You just don't know. But what bothers me is that you're not even safe doing nice things on the internet. I mean, it's kind of, some of it's kind of funny in retrospect. Like last week, I was sending out invites to that support page for yeah. um, bullying, and periodically, I just go on Chrome and I send it out all at one clip to all the friends that have been missed. And I no sooner sent out an invite to an anti-cyber bullying page when one of my friends on Facebook private messages me, what the hell are you doing sending me all these goddamn invites? What the hell's wrong with you? And it was right. for an anti-bullying page. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not being selective. I'm sending them all out at one time. I just hit send. And he goes, you're a liar. That's not how it works. I said, yes, it is. It's, I'm using Chrome, and that is how it works. And I'm not, I don't have the time to pick people out of it. I'd have to go through 5,000 people. And he got very, very, very sorry got about that. So worked up. That's okay. I had that earlier before you came on. We had feedback going on like crazy. He, uh, I said to him, if you don't like the friend invites, you can just ignore them, the page invites, or you can just unfriend me. Right. Friend requested me in the first place. And he said, well, I'll, I guess I'll just do that. Good riddance to you. I don't know why the hell I ever friended you in the first place. And I'm thinking to myself, why? I get requests for peop from people all the time to like pages. It's easy to ignore it. You don't have to get upset about it. And the irony being, he got bullying over an anti-bullying page invite. It's just like, you got to be kidding. That's what goes on all the time. I don't understand people, and it's bad. It's really bad. I had an issue two days ago that I'm still trying to get over. It doesn't happen that much anymore since I have this page up, and people know it. But I had a, a, a person my husband thought was a friend that we only talked to on Facebook attack me viciously in a 58-comment thing under one of my posts on Facebook. 58 comments of it. And it was horrible, and I kept asking him to stop. You're upsetting me. I, you know, he knows all the issues I have, and he just kept going. And I kept saying, why are you doing this? Please stop. And he wouldn't stop. And I'm still trying to get over it because that stuff really gets to me, and I'm really, really upset about it. I'm mean, really upset about it. And it just is beyond my, how this is so out of hand on the Internet. I don't know if you find that it's like that, that there's... People feel like there's no repercussions online whatsoever. And they can just say anything to anybody. And if it's vicious enough and they fear that maybe you might report them, they'll just block you when they're done before you can even report them. Right. And they just go ahead and do the damage and they just go ahead and move on. And they leave a wake of people really, really hurt by it. And I want to be able to do something to change that. You know, I'll never make money at doing that, so I'm basically online trying to promote businesses where I actually will make money, but I'm really pushing the platform for the, the anti-bullying because of that, because I personally can't deal with it, and I'm pretty well versed with dealing with stuff online, and I cannot deal with, with it when people come along and they attack my soft points, which are you know, my mental issues and my physical issues and my personal life and the autism gets no respect whatsoever. People think that it's just like, well, you have, you have broad spectrum, fully functional autism. You, you know, you, you're just looking for, you just drama, you know, it's just drama. You're full of drama. And I'm not like that. I'm just honest. And I just put it all out there and people just think, oh, you're just looking for attention. We're just going to go at you a thousand times harder now. And it's so hard. So that's that's why I figured accepting when you told me what the show was about and right. why you do it. I thought, oh my God, you know, that's really great. I didn't even know why you contacted me offhand, but I thought, you know, it's potentially a platform to discuss an issue that I've seen people actually die from, and it's not a joke. I mean, I said to him. 
I said to him the two nights ago, you know, please stop. I'm so very upset by this that I'm actually, you know, feeling I can't cope with it. You're you're making it so that I literally I don't have the way to cope with the, with the way that I process things. I can't cope with certain things very well at all, and this was just overwhelming. And he just found that entertaining. And when people find it entertaining, they just keep going. And for people like me, I can't deal with it. So I know there's lots of people out there like that. And I know whenever I post on the page and stuff, a lot of people pay attention because they understand. But I think it's really sad that people that are different aren't given, given the chance to show that different can really mean that you have a lot more to offer in ways that the general public can't even go there. Their minds can't even go there. If you have to deal with a disability, you have to learn so many different ways to process things. And you have skills that the general public doesn't have, therefore. And it's it's something that needs to be tapped into and utilized. And, you know, people with problems, people that the general public consider not as important as them, we're actually more important because we have a perspective that they don't have and abilities sometimes that they don't have and nobody's open to it. We're just, you know, fun to pick on. Yeah, absolutely. Late stuff, you know. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Now, wrapping up, uh, I just want to add one thing to what you were saying. It's like me and my talk show. Well, what is your disability? You say you're mentally challenged or retarded, but we don't see that wrong with you. Right. Are you lying? Are you putting on a mask? No. Ass. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, I do have disabilities, yet I... I hide it, but you know, sometimes it does show, my family knows, but, you know, they see it more than other people, but just, just, it's, you know, I do have social anxiety, I do have panic attacks, but yeah. it's kind of like, there's a bubble that I kind of form over it over the years. Right. It isn't just like, I'm like, and <laughs> then as I flip a switch, you know, like, okay, I'm normal today. Tomorrow, I'll lose this and I flip it again. It's like, I don't do that. I used to be like that. I used to walk around with, I don't care. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to walk around and do that. But then I was like, okay, now people are got to remember me as a kid who did stupid things. <laughs> like I just did. But, um... I don't know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can, you know, I promote myself, I look for people, I stay super, st I say stupid, st you know, I can't even talk, I say <laughs> stupid shit, but I have a good heart, I'm a good person, I swear to God I'm that. Do I do things to bring on myself? Yes, but I do not do it intentionally. Um, right? Like, what happened with my job, I just... It's obvious that you're a good person. It is obvious. You know, it's like, like, yeah, Heath Lezard said to John, the Joker, he's being the Joker. I'm like a dog chasing a car, but once I get the car, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of like me. I'm chasing things, but then I don't know what to do with it when I have it. But I know that's a bad metaphor, but, um... No, I, un I understand what you mean. I do. I empathize. You know, my family, especially my husband, you know, sees me in a ball on the floor rocking back and forth and stuff, you know, on a daily basis. Nobody else sees that. Not ever. Um, people think I'm actually social. And, you know, I cover it really well. And people think I'm actually outgoing. And I'm so not outgoing. And I'm so not social. I mean, I would rather crawl under the table wrap a blanket around myself and never, never, never go anywhere and never talk to people, you know, but I can't do that. I have to, you're kind of forced, I guess, to be fairly social. But you you deserve credit for what you're doing because it's hard. I know how hard it is to put on the front and cover it up because you are, you know, you're you're you and you what you are is good enough. But in order for the, the idiots that general society is, you really do have to put a, a covering on it and a facade and pass yourself 
off in a different way in order to be heard for even to have the chance of being heard for what you actually are. And that's what you have to shoot for because you have something that's worth being heard. But in order to do it, we have to fit in first. You have to, <laughs> right. You know, yeah, that's what really sucks. It really sucks that you're not just appreciated the whole aspect, every bit of your personality. You're having a really horrible day. You know, if I'm having a horrible day, I should be able to put up a picture instead of having it to be a perfect picture of something that fits in the feeds and make people happy and all this other crap, I should be able to just put up a picture sitting on a ball on the floor if that's how I feel. But I can't. It's just not... I would love to see a, a situation where you can do your show and have all of general society think that that's the greatest thing ever. And instead of saying to you, well, I don't see a disability, so I don't even know what you're talking about, and what's that perspective about? You seem normal. And then the whole point's missed. Right. And the whole point of view, and the whole, and it's missed with me all the time, too. And I have this huge description of all the issues I have so that people can kind of try to grasp it, and all they do is what you said. They look at it, and they're like, well, I don't see it. So, you know, I don't see how it really applies to anything. And... It's just, you know, over their head. Yeah, absolutely. Now, wrapping up the show, the interview segment, at least, I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thank you for having me on your talk show. It's awesome. <laughs>